What's up guys, I'm Lee Williamson and today I have an awesome tutorial for you. So, UV mapping. No, 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 don't run away. Uh, when I'm done, you'll feel a lot more confident. At least that's what I'm hoping. So without further ado, let's dig in. Right, so I've got this uh, milk jug and uh, before I start to UV map it, um, if I turn my subdivision surface on, you can see it's relatively low poly but I want to make sure that I have enough um, segments on it before I put my UV map on it. Otherwise the UV map could be quite stretched over this. So when I turn my subdivision surface on, I'm going to turn my subdivision render up to down to one. Um, let show you what it looks like in the editor also. And at least it gives just some extra uh, sections on there. And then what I can do is I can bake this down and then I can always put this back in another subdivision surface to make this even smoother once I've got my UV map on it. So let's just call this mug. Then we're going to go into our UV edit mode. And now this is your modeling uh, tools and this is your UV editing tool. So if we go into our UV polys, that's how you work with your poly islands when UV mapping on the side. So first of all, it's all selected. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my projection, just press frontal. And right now, this is where my camera is set is it's at the front. So actually, let's just select it all again, uh, control, all, press frontal, and then press E on my keyboard, which is your move tool, and just move it off the stage. And then we're going to slowly but surely go through cutting this up uh, to make a UV map out of it. So first of all, if I just go to my standard and I create a new, um, let's just call this a UV, uh, UV, let's just call it UV. And I'm going to go and choose my UV grid. Um, you can just get this anywhere on Google. Um, easy to pick up and I'm going to drag that UV grid onto my milk jug. Right now you can't see it so you would go into your uh, editor and you change your texture uh, preview size to no scaling and it should be nice and sharp. And you can see this is a very terrible UV at the moment. Now, just so you bear in mind, um, this UV is currently all sitting on top of this little tag called a UV tag. So when you go into a UV edit mode, all that information is being stored for this on that little tag. So if you ever not be able to see it appear, just click on that tag and it should appear again. Or if you wanted to start a new UV map, you could just delete that. Uh, let's just go into my uh, user and you can go to Click on your tags, UV tags, set new, you uh, set from projection, and it'll give you a new tag. So let's go back into our UVs. And the first thing I want to do is I want to cut this up. So I could start off on the outside of the jug. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my polys and uh, Tell you what, if I just turn this off for now, um, what I can do, if I just go to the user and I create a null, this little trick to make life a lot easier, and I'm just going to drag that UV map onto the null, so I could just drag it on and off whenever I'm modeling it. So it's not in my way when I'm trying to see my segments. So I'm going to go to the top of the, the mug and press UL, get my loop selection, UL there, a loop selection at the top. And then down to just where it sneaks underneath there. So, but there, so I've selected the top part of my UV and the 
bottom part of it and then I'm going to press UF and fill that selection and now I'll fill that full selection now before I unwrap this I need to have a seam where I can uncut it almost think of it like a origami or skinning a, a pig skin or animal skin or whatever it is uh, so I'm going to go into my uh, edge tool now let's just click off that edge tool okay there yeah, working perfectly fine and I'm going to whack in a seam so we can have the seam either at the front or at the back probably uh, it would be better to have a seam kind of at the back where it's a little bit more uh, hidden so if I press UM I can use my um, what do you call this UM U UM is called a path selection tool I thought I might as well just let you guys know before I uh, go ahead and do it and I'm going to select all the way down and keep going down here until I get down well, actually I don't even have to go that far really I can just go down uh, roughly about there that's fine so I've selected that full, uh, the, the polys and the edges, and then I'm going to go into relax UVs and I'm going to select cut, uh, cut select edges. And now these are the edges that I selected, um, over there. So it remembers those. So it tells it where to unfold it from. So you can just choose L S C M or A F A B F either one tried out uh, some produce different kinds of results and I press apply and that's gonna unwrap the UVs like so and you can see the islands over there and I can press E on my keyboard E uh, here we go I have to press that again press E and bring it down to the end now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that UV mapping back on here again so you can see what's actually happening. If I press T on my keyboard and I can scale this UV map, map up, press R and uh, rotate it. You can see what's going on right now is there is where the seam is. So almost imagine you uh, cut this up and fold it out like a piece of paper and that's where the seam is and it's seamless on the other side. So it kind of that is where the seam is there and the seam is there and then it's perfect there. Now, the one problem you may notice already is that these lines, um, let's see, if I move it over to the side, are skewing down and skewing up and skewing down and they just all look really messy now that might work when you're doing uh uv mapping for a character but it doesn't quite work when you've got more hard surface models so i found another technique that could work um you can go into your projection over here and if you click on say frontal no not frontal try Try cylinder. Cylinder looks like it wraps up nicely. So when I click on cylinder now, it's unwrapped. Uh, it looks a little bit squished. So I can go into transform and put the X scale to two and I press apply. And that looks like I stretched out the polys a lot nicer and neater. And then I can press T on my keyboard and scale it back down. And now they look quite nice but you're gonna notice something that's really strange here is it's messed with these poly islands and do you remember originally the seam didn't cut at the um, the milk spout it cut at the back so I'm gonna show you if I clicked on this island it actually shows you where the island is over here you see you've got a little square there and a little square there kind of like here and here so what you could do is you could press 
uh, you select your islands. Uh, let's select some of our islands. Okay, let's make our brush a little bit bigger. If you press your middle mouse button, you can make your brush bigger by pressing middle mouse into the right. And we can select some of these islands. Okay, where's it selecting up to? Up to there and up to there. Let's zoom in there and make sure that the island is fully clicked. And where does that seam go to? Okay, so we need, if you notice, our seam was supposed to go to there. So hold down shift and just select the rest of those islands. Let's zoom in, that's cool. And then I'm just gonna press E and I'm gonna move it to the other side. And almost think of this like a puzzle where those pieces were meant to go inside there. They fit perfectly. So all I need to do is really zoom in nice and close Press E on my keyboard and watch what happens um, on the right hand side here when I line these up. Let's zoom in nice and snug. I must admit, I used to hate doing this, but I'm starting to find it more therapeutic once you get the hang of it. And now we have a very nice clean UV. So just by the way, if you want to select all the islands, you just press U, W, and it does the whole selection. And then you just press E and you can move it to the middle. So there we go. We've got the seam on the back. Nice and neat. And we can do the same thing for the other side. But now with this technique, we don't need to use an edge selection tool to cut down the seam because we're going to make the seam ourselves in this new technique I showed you. So we can go back to our selection. And since it's already selected over here, let's just take this UV and just drag it off there so I can see my selections. And we can go U and it's UI for invert and it inverts your selection. So now I've got my milk jug selected on the inside, but I don't want the handle select. So I can go and press UF and then hold down control and it will unselect that handle. So now that we just have the inside, woo. And what we're gonna do, this is, if you can't see anything over here, it's because you just have to select back on your uh, UV tag. Let's zoom nice and close in there. You zoom in with a two and pan around with a one, by the way. And we can do the same thing again. We're gonna press uh, cylinder it's going to unwrap. Um, let's try pressing relax. Work, no. Front tool and then cylinder. Hmm, it's kind of not so neat when it unwraps. What's the reason for that? Okay, well, what I'm going to do is let's see if I can actually. Uh, deselect the circle underneath here. U L U F. Okay, for whatever reason, we're selecting the poly islands underneath there. So now it should just be the inside. And you know what? I want to actually get rid of these. Um, this part of the UV island because I actually want that to be nice and neat, the flat bottom of the, the jug. So just as the jug comes to a, a flat surface from about here, I can click on the island, uh, press uh, control, and then UF control. And now I've unselected that. So now I've just selected the inside without the, the, the bottom or the inside. And now let's try back to uh, cylinder and perfect. Now the islands have come out great. So once again, I'm going to drag that texture back on here so I can see what it's, what it's looking like. And let's see, once again, it's looking nasty. So we're going to clean that up.
we're going to go into transform, set our scale on the X value to um, two. And what it's going to do, it's going to double the length like that. And then press T and, uh, oh wait, click back on here again. Surely there's got to be a fast way to click back and forth, but I don't know it anyway. So T, scale it down. E, bring it down here. And uh, let's see. I'm just going to bring this right off the stage over here. Just because all this muck at the bottom, I'll show you how to clean that up afterwards. Now, which side of the scene do I actually want on this? I probably want the, the scene not to be on there. I want it to be on, I guess, on that side. So I'm going to do the same thing as before. Um, let's just see how far. Where's the middle? Okay, probably need to select a few more islands. So select up to there maybe. And that looks like the middle to me. Cool. And like a puzzle, we're going to do the same thing again. Press the on our keyboard, move it to the other side. Zoom in with a two key, move around, pan. Zoom in again with a two, pan with a one key. And let's zoom in nice and close. And slot it in over there. Boom. And there we go. It's nice and neat. I'm really happy with that. Cool. So we have these two very neat um, sizes. The reason I said sizes is because I realize these sizes aren't the same size, but you know what? Don't worry about that for now. Let's just whack that over there. Now, the next thing I want to do is when unwrapping things, you don't always get the, the perfect shapes to um, to paint on. There's always going to be seams. So I decided that I would mind that there was a seam at the bottom because otherwise there's no way that would unwrap properly. Um, if you have another way, by all means, show me. Um, so if I press UL on the keyboard and then U F hold down shift and select the inside of that. Tell you what, I'm just gonna drag that off there again so you can see what I'm doing. And then click back on the UV tag. And I'm gonna go into top view, right? So top view, so you can see the perfect circle. And then I'm gonna go into projection and I'm gonna choose frontal. So when you choose frontal, it chooses where the camera is situated. So when I press it, it turns it into a perfect circle because the camera is sitting at the top. So I can press E, uh, E, move that around, T and scale that up, boom, all sorted. And then I can do the same thing for this side. Um, UL, UF, and fill that selection. Go into my uh, top view again. Okay, get that top view and press frontal again. And then click back on UV polys, press E, and move it down there. Cool. So let's just drag that back onto my mug model so we can see where we are. Right, so I'm happy with that. It's looking fairly neat. And um, for the next bit, we're gonna have to work on that handle. Now the handle may be a bit troublesome, but I've figured it out. And um, it's using a fairly similar technique that I used in the beginning. In this circumstance, I, I couldn't really go for that flat version. So let me show you what I meant. So I'm just going to drag it off there again. And I'm going to 
UF, select the whole entire handle, then press the edge selection tool. Um, and I'm going to go for a seam that's nice and hidden, which I think is this corner. If I press E and then double click, it should select that whole entire side edge. And then I press U. What was that one called again? Um, UM. If you can't find it, just think um, UM. That's one way to remember it. Um. So let's select up to the corner and probably up to about there. So imagine when you are uh, cutting a piece of paper apart, you need to find a place where it's going to cut apart. And I kind of figured out that you'd have to slice along the side and then slice it down to that corner to then unwrap this handle. And the same thing goes for this edge over here. If I zoom into that edge, it's going to go right down to that very corner. Okay, I think I think I got it right. So cool. Right, so then we're going to go into back onto our UVs and make sure the cut edge is selected is a um, is ticked, and then press apply. And there we go, it is unwrapped. So essentially, that's what it looks like. And then you can always go to A, B, F and press apply. Maybe it makes a more straight version of it. Um, much more pleasing for a geometric shape uh, that we have here. And uh, we can then press E and move it onto the stage. Right, so we have this all. I'm just going to press save and I'm going to press control all and select all of these. And then I can go into my optimal mapping and I'm going to press equalize island size and realign and press apply. And what that does, actually, if I press Apple Z, let me just put that UV map back on you. Now, as you notice, all these islands are, are different sizes. So the numbers on this side compared to the numbers on that side would be a different size. So notice one small thing I want to fix. If I click on here, so this inside face, you can notice these numbers are backwards. Numbers should never be backwards because when you're painting your textures, everything is going to come backwards. If you have some typography that's going to be running on your models, they're going to look backwards. So Let's click on here, press uh, UW, and we're gonna go into UV commands, and we're gonna choose something called mirror U, and boom, it flips around the UV map. There we go, that's nice. And then on this side, um, well, since I can't see that one, I'm gonna have to just select all of these. Um, let's select all of them on optimal mapping, realign, and equalize the islands. So what it's gonna do is gonna make all these islands the same uh, the same size so that all the numbers should all match. And as you notice on this handle, that number is backwards. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. Click on there, press U, W, go to UV commands and mirror U, and that should flip the other way around. And there we go. That looks nice. And you know, if I press E and move it around, you can see the numbers seem to be all right. Now, I don't know if you've ever gone to, gone to Pinterest, you know, some people make a real uh, ball out of uh, getting this all nice and neat out of the layout so that, you know, the, the more stretch that your uh, UV map uh, polygons are over this whole entire canvas, the uh, higher resolution that your image can be. So some people will try and fit these circles year and year and year. Um, I'm not really going to cover that, but if you know if you are a keen uh, 80s kid like me and like to play the game Tetris, you're welcome to go and pick up your islands and move them around, and uh, until you're happy about where it sits, you know it's it's up to you. It's all personal. Cool. So the next thing I'm going to show you is 
how to create a texture. So we're going to go to our materials and um, we're going to go file new material and we're going to click this little red button called uh, uh, and that should uh, just uh, I have no idea what it does but gets it started and then there's a very uh, transparent little X over here. I really wish uh, Cinema 4D would make that a lot more apparent, but if you double click it, it comes up with the size uh, dimension of a UV map. So I've got mine on 4096 by 4096, and then you can choose a color, and preferably this will be the color that you would, um, you want your, your UV map to start off with. And most people like to uh, texture the UV map with a base color that's darker than the darkest shading on your, your picture. So for example, if I'm going to choose metal, I'm going to make sure that that's a, a slightly bluish metal and it's going to be nice and, and fairly dark. And then when I airbrush on it, all my highlights will kind of build up from lighter colors. So I'll go, okay. And then I can call this a uh, mug texture like texture and press OK and then I can drag that mug texture on top of my mug. So currently if I had to go back into my normal layout uh, there are two uh, textures on here so you know right now this one is sitting above that in hierarchy so essentially it's just holding two textures you can always delete this UV grid if you want. Going back to my UV edit mode press uh, save and I'm going to go into file at the really top. Now, I don't know why they don't have a file save over here considering this is where your textures are, but hey, that's that's the way it is. Uh, so there's your materials. I'm going to go file and we're going to click on our material, file, save as. And we don't want to visit TIFF, we're going to visit a PSD because we are going to be airbrushing different layers on there. So PSD, OK. And then I'm going to go mug texture, Lee. yay, whatever. That's cool. Press save. Boom. And you got to texture. And then you just save that. And what we're going to do next is. We're going to select all the islands and we're going to go to image, what is it, layer, and outline polys. Now, there's a color over here. This color is white. So you can choose a different color if you want just by double clicking it and uh, choosing whatever color you want. I'm just going to keep it white. But just to let you know that that's the color that it's, it's basing um, what I'm going to do next off. So layer. Uh, outline polys and it's going to create outlines on your poly islands and now this is essentially all right to say control Z again uh, control Z again go down over here woo down here and press uh, on new layer and we're going to call that outlines all right I shouldn't do it on my background layer and uh, we're going to go back to layer outline polys and now if you turn the eye on and off, just like in Photoshop, you have your outlines with your polys on. And press save. And here we have our texture and my outlines on there. And then what I'd usually do is I'd take the opacity and I'd pull it nice and low. Not too low. Cool. And create a new layer and let's just call this highlight, or whatever you're going to call it. And then you can start to paint on here. Say, let's just say we actually wanted this to be maybe a darker shadow underneath the, the inside of the uh, mud. So I can There we go. And I can paint inside here and paint inside here. 
and create another layer and who knows uh, we want to highlight over here perhaps I will cover a tutorial next on on how to paint a very nice UV but just for this sake I'm just showing you uh, and then we're going to turn the outlines off now we turn off the outlines because once we do want to see it in cinema 40 we don't want to see that layer on it's just the guide layer and then press Control s and we save it and then all we need to do is um, to see it is to double click um, go into our color this is where the texture is sitting drop down this little uh, texture is it texture and um, this little area here and just say uh, this should be a, a reload image and just say yes and there we go you have started to paint your texture directly on your mug now you are a professional UV mapper so go ahead and make something awesome I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. If you did, please like, share and subscribe as I'd very much appreciate it. And as you know, my uh, subscribers are quite low. And uh, during this lockdown, I'm hoping to punch that level up. And the only way I can do that is with your guys' help. So if you can, I'd be very much appreciated. If you think this content is worth sharing, then do so. You know what I appreciate it. Thanks guys, bye.